Welcome back to Reliable Sources from Washington today. President Trump ended his drought of interviews by calling in live to vent on Fox and Friends Thursday morning. If you haven't watched it, I recommend pulling up the entire thing on the web. You know, the president has limited his interview availability this year. I think it's worth thinking about last year versus this year. He was new in office. He gave more than a dozen interviews in the first few months in office. This year, there's been a real pullback. The president uh, gave a couple short interviews in Davos. He's called into Fox twice, and that's about it. It seems he's mostly uh, limiting, uh, mostly avoiding giving interviews. He does do those press availabilities where he answers questions with a small group of reporters. He holds the occasional joint press conference, but we're not seeing him sit down for one-on-one -on -one interviews the way past presidents have. Let's go look at that Fox and Friends call, though, because this phone call was remarkable for so many reasons, including for the way the Fox and Friends host tried to interrupt. So right. remember, there was no way to break 270. I heard right. that on CBS and NBC and ABC. They're all fake news. So I heard that for so long in right. CNN. Let's I talk about to do better than people think in the Mr. President. Because, you know, it's very, right. the economy is so strong and jobs are so good that I think we're going to surprise. Mr. But last President, night I did watch. Question? I did watch a liar leaker. And he, his performance, by the way, was horrible. There is no collusion with me right. and Russia, and everyone knows it. Everyone, we, we talked to you about. all day, but it looks like you it have could. a million things to do. Actually, it seemed like the president wanted to keep talking. Uh, joining me now is former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, so, Anthony, uh, there was a report from Maggie Haberman that the president's aides did not want him to call into Fox and Friends, did not want him to do it. Would you advise him to, to give more or, or fewer interviews? Well, I mean, first of all, good morning. But but secondarily, I think one of the problems is he has a lot to say. And you have to remember the president's a television star. He was on uh, NBC for 15 plus years, award winning show. Uh, and I've always said, uh, let him let him go out there and let him talk and, and get him out on a number of different formats, because I think what happens is. He's getting the opportunity to speak. He knows he's got a big audience to speak to at Fox News. And then he, he loaded the shotgun, basically, I mean, and then started sort of. to say all the things he said. If he went on NBC or the CBS Evening News, he'd have a much bigger audience than he gets on Fox. If he had gone well, to the I, I, dinner last night, he would have had a big audience. Well, well, let's talk about the NBC and ABC first. Yes, on the, on the major networks he would, but I think what the problem is is that after you have a wartime declaration with the media, um, you're, 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 you're basically painted into a corner. And so, uh, but I think the thing has to be de-escalated on both sides. I was watching the early part of your show. I have an enormous amount of respect for Margaret and what she does at the White House Correspondents Association. Uh, but it would have been very nice to have given an apology given what happened. Um, I understand the freedom of the press and all that other stuff, but she's also a free speaker as well. She could use her First Amendment right and look Sarah Huckabee uh, straight in the face and say, geez, I'm very, very sorry about that. Uh, this woman said what she said. We gave her the free speech to do it. But it was wholly and totally inappropriate. And my opinion of it is that it was just wrong. And so uh, by not doing that, what ends up happening is you got escalation of hostilities on both sides. And, mm. I'm, and I will say this to you, Brian. I would have loved to have seen the president there. Uh, but I'm very happy that the president was not there to listen to that because you know, he may have gotten up and walked out. And that would have been even more devastating uh, to the tension that's going on between the White House and the press. President George W. Bush sat there while Stephen Colbert laid into him about the Iraq war and other matters. That's just part of the job for presidents. You got to be able to take a joke, Anthony. Well, there's no question that the president can take a joke. But you see, see, this is what I think is sort of interesting because I'm not a Washingtonian and I was at a yeah. few parties on Friday. And yeah. I think this is something the press misunderstands about the president and like normal mm. people that like live here in New York is when you're hitting that hard. Uh, people have a tendency to to react. I go to the National Press Club. I give a 90-minute exposition of a number of different things that are going on policy-wise. And then I get snark attacked in the Washington Post in a, just a ridiculous, non-factual way. And so, hmm. you know, I'm a normal person. I say, geez, that, is that what happened? I had 10 or 15 friends there. I even called Maggie Haberman and asked her, hey, is that how I sounded or came across at the National Press Club? And so I think hmm. what you guys are missing is you think it's totally okay to take a cheese grater to somebody's face, grade their face, drop the cheese grater and say, geez, you know, part of your job is to have the right side of your face bleeding. And so... Again, you, you, you're going to disagree with me. I see the body language from you. You're disagreeing with me. 
you guys do what you're doing. The president is going to react in a way uh, that I think is bad for the First Amendment. I think it's bad on both sides. And so I don't think I'm there's a huge a, champion of the First Amendment, Brian. Now, let me tell you something you don't talk about. The First Amendment is great for the economy because we teach our children how to think creatively and express themselves freely. That's great point. And that's why so many of these great companies are invented here in these autocracies and all those black areas of the world that you pointed out. Yeah. They don't teach that to their kids and they have a narrow band of thinking and they ultimately have to go out and try to steal our technology. And so we definitely mm. need the First Amendment. But if you're asking me honestly, I think the hostilities need to be de-escalated on both sides. It's not just the White House. Uh, what happened last night was an atrocity. Uh, and it was like literally watching Michael Wolf <laughs> know, with a wig it, on. I thought Anthony, Michelle Wolf was Michael Wolf, actually. <laughs> That's a good line. It was ridiculous. You know? Atrocity? Uh, there are some real crises in America. I don't think jokes at a dinner is one of them. Okay, I'll tell you why it's an atrocity, because it, it doesn't help what you're trying to achieve and what I think all of us are trying to achieve. Your, okay. your logo says facts first. Uh, we want the White House obviously to be accountable. We want people in the White, we want an openness with the White House. But this constant barrage of attacks, uh, people are human, Brian. They're just gonna look at that and say, hey, I'm sorry, no moss. No, I, look, look I, I'm with you and I think there's so much tribalism in the country. Uh, th that kind of, that kind of stand-up act does do damage to the standing of the journalism profession. Um, but you know, you're talking about de-escalating. Do you think the president should be giving interviews to CNN, MSNBC, not, you know, I'm not expecting him to go on Rachel Maddow's show right away, but you know, CNN, NBC, other major networks? I, 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 I have said that uh, from day one, you know, I, I had that job for 11 days. Why doesn't he take your counsel? I know you still talk to him. Why doesn't he take that advice? Well, I think I think he feels that he's not going to get a fair shake. I think he feels that if he goes into these situations again, I'll just give you the example. I'm at the National Press Club. Go look at the tape and then go read the Washington Post story. He feels that these things are going to get twisted and convoluted. And he feels much better just going directly to people on Twitter or going out to Washington Township, Michigan and giving a speech. Um, I think if people were treat them fairly uh, and, and just let them speak and talk about the policies, the agenda. I mean, I mean, there's a huge story that went on last week that I, I don't think is really being covered properly. He helped with uh, Mike Pompeo and others on his team, H.R. McMaster, et cetera, uh, to bring peace to the north and south of Korea. Uh, and there has been a truce there and an armistice, but not a peace treaty. And they're you working towards been that coverage? now. There's been a lot of attention. I, I, I think the coverage is like people are more shocked about it and people are more uh, begrudgingly giving the president credit as opposed to uh, 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 telling the facts the way they actually are. This, how this, are we going to measure guy, how much credit he's supposed okay. to get? I mean, that's impossible. OK, so so, Brian. Brian, if you switched it around, if it was a Democratic president, there's a lot of people on the Republican mm -hmm. side that think there would be a whole Jim Barry session going on in the media. And so he he, he helped to do that. And you got to you got to give mm -hmm. the guy credit for it. If you guys if you guys want to give a muted credit or begrudging credit, it just comes across unfair to a lot of people. A lot of people a lot of people tune it out. They watch it on TV and say, why aren't they giving him credit? He basically, 65 years of intractable I've agony on the Korean credit, Peninsula, and we're now going for peace and denuclearization. Uh, Anthony Scaramucci, thanks for being here. Please come back soon. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you.